So you have watched every anime drawing tutorial on YouTube and absorbed all the necessary knowledge to draw your dream waifu and husband though. You have also dedicated hours to tutorials from mastering anime facial structures to understanding basic human anatomy. So technically speaking, you should be able to draw, right? <laughs> well, you can definitely draw, just that your character looks like the Titans from Attack on Titan. Hey, there's no shame in this. Maybe that's how Hajime Isayama started his manga career. If you want to become a good artist, it's important to master the art of drawing lines. It's not so much about the muscles or the shapes when it comes to drawing a character, it's about the quality of the lines itself. Well, you see, knowing how to draw lines is different from line art. Line art is about making lines look interesting by changing their thickness. It's a conscious decision you make as you draw. But lines are just basic strokes, and the quality of these lines is a reflection of your fundamental skills. To put it simply, lines come before line art. From what I've noticed, all the great artists, whether they draw anime or realism, have the ability to draw consistent and confident lines. Here's how they do it. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that has a plethora of drawing classes, from traditional art to anime drawing. Well, you might be confused since there are so many classes to choose from, but no worries, Skillshare has a drawing learning path ready for you if you're not sure where to begin. So in this learning path, it has 7 classes in total to prepare you on the fundamentals of drawing. Here, you will learn various drawing basics such as mark making, perspective, proportion, contour, light, and shadow. The classes in Learning Path are designed specifically to equip you with the basics of drawing. If you want to learn how to draw better, now is the perfect time to invest in yourself. The first 500 people to click the link can get one month free trial of Skillshare. Generally, lines can be categorized into three main types, C-line, S-line, and I-line. Just like their names, they are shaped like the letter C, S, and I. C is a line that's curved, and S is a line that bends on two points. As for I, it's a straight line. All lines could be broken down into CSI curves, so stop drawing long and unnecessarily curvy lines. Just keep it simple to these three letters. Once you get this, you'll see how it makes your drawings look better. Let's take a look at this drawing. There's nothing wrong with the lines, but the drawing just doesn't feel great. So here's another drawing with CSI curves applied. Clearly, there's a big difference. If you look closely, especially the face and the hair, you can actually see the CSI lines. But how should we practice this? The answer is copy drawing. As you're copy drawing, always be aware of the line curvature and inclination. Analyze how the CSI curves are applied in those drawings. I suggest you kuhais to look up references on Pinterest to help you gain more perspective. I've also put together a few practice references that you can use for your CSI curve practice. You can find them in the Google Drive link in the description below. Feel free to download them and practice. Now that you're proficient in drawing lines, the next step is mastering the line of action. The line of action is a continuous line that stretches from the head to the toes, portraying the primary motion direction of a character. Interestingly, the line of action primarily manifests in three shapes, which are C, S, and I. Once you're aware of these CSI curves, you'll begin to see them everywhere. Let's break it down one by one. The C shape is usually seen in poses that are bending, arching, or when a character sits with their legs drawn up. The C curve is usually drawn at the spine. It also conveys dynamic action. You can literally find the S shape in various poses, especially if there's an angular deviation between the chest and pelvis. For example, if the shoulder and pelvis tilt in opposite directions, the line of action of the body would look like an overarching curve. This S can also result from twisting the torso or hips. The eye shape represents rigidity. It appears when the shoulder and pelvis angles align. Although it might seem static, it's actually the best way to portray strong and firm poses. To enhance the eye shape, there are two ways you can do this. The first way is to slightly tilt the pose so that it looks more dynamic. However, there's a catch when implementing this technique. You cannot draw the entire body. The tilted pose should be framed so that it doesn't extend below the thighs. Thus, it doesn't make sense to draw the lower half of the body because the body won't be balanced in this position no matter what. Many manga artists love to use this technique. It's a great and easy way to make the pose more interesting. Next, it's time to transition to an S shape. Notice the difference in the inclination of the shoulder level and the pelvis. In the original pose, it doesn't look dynamic at all. You can see how the shoulder and pelvis levels are parallel here. 
However, if you slightly tilt both the shoulder and pelvis, the pose changes to a more dynamic structure. A small tip here is that when you tilt the shoulder, make sure to tilt the pelvis in the opposite direction. When drawing the S and C shapes, simply amplify their curvatures. For the S shape, the curves may seem unrealistic, but it actually fits perfectly in anime. You can see this shape in a lot of female characters. Take a look at the example. The picture on the left is the reference picture of a female ready to throw a baseball. The middle image shows the geometric structure of the original pose, and the right image shows the exaggerated geometric structure. Can you spot the difference? Here, let me show you the answer. So the first difference is the chest and pelvis. They are more tilted compared to the original pose. When drawing female characters, it's important to accentuate the curves, especially the chest and buttocks. Yes, draw your character like you're drawing Kim Kardashian. The second difference is the arm placement. I brought the arm closer to the face to make the pose more compact and tight, like it's charging up for a powerful throw. Lastly, I've made some changes on the right leg as well. Notice how the right leg is bent more inwards compared to the original pose. Yes, I know legs don't bend like that in real life, but hey, we're drawing anime. By incorporating all of these exaggerations, we can create a much more dynamic S-shaped line of action. Now, let's take a look at the C-shaped pose. Once again, the middle image represents the geometric structure of the original pose, while the image on the right shows the exaggerated geometric structure. It might be slightly difficult to find out what arrangement I tweak, but here's the key. For any C-shaped line of action, just make it even more curved. Firstly, we can see that the abdominal area has become much more compressed. This causes the spine and back area to curve even more, which creates a rounder C-shape. As a result, you won't have as much space to position your arms. Observe how the arms are pushed forward compared to the original drawing. Make sure to maintain the accuracy of your anatomy while exaggerating your pose. Oftentimes, a great artwork doesn't necessarily require fancy line art, lighting techniques, composition methods, or complex color theories. In fact, less is more. If you can execute those simple and small things correctly, they will add up and yield fantastic results. All you need to do is just implement the CSI curves and exaggerate the line of action of the pose that you are drawing. Alright, I hope you Kuhais find this video helpful. Feel free to support me on Patreon, I really appreciate it. Please drop a like, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter. DM me if you want a commission from me. Alright, that's all from me. Jana Kuhais.